The RS4 shows Audi at its brilliant best. Fast, frantic, but perfectly practical. This third generation version is a Ferrari for families. A five seater estate with a high revving 450 PS V8 that can hit 174 mile an hour on the Nürburgring, but is just as happy collecting your dry cleaning. You only truly get a sense of just how fast it is by following behind in something else. At which point, whatever that might be, it'll be hard not to wish you were in an RS4. This car you see is one of a kind. Every once in a while, a car is developed that's so good and such a class benchmark that other manufacturers are wary about taking it on. The Range Rover, for example, maybe the Mazda MX-5. Audi makes such a car too, and it's this one, the RS4 Avant. If you want a very, very fast four-wheel drive estate with supercar performance, then there's no really credible alternative to this one. The work of Quattro GmbH, Audi's go faster arm, the genes of this particular car can be traced right back to the RS2 estate of 1994 that was co-developed with Porsche. That paved the way for the first generation in the RS4 line, the 2.7 litre six cylinder twin turbo Mark I model of 2000, a car that was ferociously quick, but ultimately rather unsatisfying in the way that fast Audis used to be. But aren't any more. The second generation RS4 of 2006, this model proved to be a landmark car for the brand, a machine good enough at last to properly challenge the all-conquering BMW M3. And a car so well received that first impressions of this third generation version uh, suggest that Audi has been a little shy of making too many changes. Launched here late in 2012 with what appears to be much the same 4.2 litre V8 engine developing much the same kind of performance, this seems to be the safest of evolutions. But appearances can be deceptive. Audi tells us that this car is not only more efficient but quicker through the corners, faster on the brakes and more enjoyable for the enthusiast. If they're right, then we could be looking here at arguably the most satisfying practical performance car of all time. Let's try it. Not a lot prepares you for just how fast this car really is. Certainly not the initial experience of getting in and firing the thing up. Yes, there are a set of brilliant back wing sports seats, or in this case, a, a pair of even better RS4 branded bucket chairs. But otherwise, at first glance, it seems pretty much standard high-end Audi. And yes, a prod of the start button produces a satisfying V8 waffle, but nothing to suggest that shortly you'll be worrying Ferrari folk. But then subtlety, you might think, is all part and parcel of the RS4 driving experience. And I'd agree, up to a point, except that there's nothing really very subtle about the behavior you have to adopt to really get this car to deliver in the way that you just know it can. Here's a car that just loves to be picked up by the scruff of the neck and given 100% at which point you get a fuller acoustic repertoire of pops, yowls, rumbles and barks than anything else this side of a proper supercar. Enough to paint a very big smile on your face. Audis don't normally do this. You admire them, but they don't normally make the hairs on the back of your neck stand upright, which makes this RS4 a very special car indeed. Especially when you're hurling it away from rest. Yes, you can ease this car into traffic like an A8, something that's easier to do now that a silky smooth seven-speed dual-clutch S-Tronic uh, auto transmission has replaced the previous manual gearbox. But once in a while, and you simply have to try this if you buy this car, find yourself a clear stretch of road and try the whole thing DTM style. Now, there are no fiddly launch settings on the uh, standard launch control system. You simply 
uh, disconnect the ESC stability control system, put the gearbox into sport, plant your left foot on the brake and your right foot on the throttle. The car holds to 3000 RPM and you get this wonderful world rally car soundtrack and then simply sidestep the brake and the car hurls itself forward like this. It's brutal yet highly addictive uh, and it's something that your local Audi Centre won't take kindly to you doing on the test drive. Uh, for the sake of the clutch in this car I'm not going to keep repeating it but if ever you wanted an indication of just how brilliantly this RS4 manages its traction it doesn't get much better than that. It's barely any slower in the wet. Conditions in which rival rear-driven BMW M3 or Mercedes C63 AMG models would be slewing their way through the puddles, traction control lights flashing like Belisha beacons. In contrast, this RS4 just grips and goes. Under the bonnet lies what appears to be the same 4.2 litre V8 that was used in the previous generation version of this car. A surprise for Audi followers who expected either an uprated version of the supercharged 3 litre V6 used in the S4 or perhaps more likely uh, the twin turbo uh, V8 developed for Ingolstadt's uh, S8 Super Saloon and borrowed by Bentley's Continental GT. Instead, this classic 4.2 litre V8 gets one last outing before the green lobby puts the final nail in its coffin. And what an engine it is. Also used in the brands RS5 Coupe and Convertible and, as there, offering glorious oral fireworks under heavy acceleration that sees 0-62 miles an hour flash by in the same 4.7 second increment as before on the way to a top speed that can be as high as 174 miles an hour if you pay extra to have the 155 miles an hour restrictor uh, removed. I probably need to put those performance stats into some kind of perspective. Perspective. Take the kind of supercar that you maybe had on your bedroom wall as a kid, say a Ferrari 512 TR for example. Yes, this eminently practical family five-seater is just as fast. So much though was also true of this car's direct 2006 predecessor and at least that car could be had with the uh, kind of manual gearbox that most enthusiasts prefer. So where's the progress? Well, bear with me, I'm getting to that. For a start, Audi's engineering division won't be happy with me at all for suggesting that this 4.2 litre V8 is essentially the same as before, because in fact, they put an awful lot of effort into trying to improve it. You don't get efficiency gains of up to 30% without changing almost every part. Yet they've managed to do this at the same time as pushing peak power up from 420 to 450 PS and enabling the driver to access it all uh, 1500 revs lower in the rev range from a much more accessible 4000 RPM. Anyway, even if the engine hadn't changed, the fundamentals of this design very much have. Fed up with hearing BMW boffins drone on about how much better their cars are thanks to their even 50-50 front to rear weight distribution, the Ingolstadt engineers have achieved pretty much the same thing here by shoving 90 kilograms of the engine's mass backwards, which, as you can imagine, results in a notably sharper front end. Along with a revised Quattro four-wheel drive system that now, in normal conditions, pushes only 40% of power towards the front, it helps to create that more rearward biased feeling of control that driving connoisseurs prefer. Safe in the knowledge that should conditions or over-enthusiasm lead to trouble, then the ratio can change in milliseconds. Uh, pushing up to 70% of torque of power to the front or up to 85% back to the rear. In extremis, you won't really feel any of this happening even if you had time to. All you really experience are flattering feelings of Schumacher-like control and seemingly limitless grip, further enhanced by a torque vectoring system that helps you get all that power down onto the tarmac during tight turns, working with a self-locking crown gear differential system and a sports rear differential. 
four exceptionally smooth torque transfer between the front and the rear axles and between left and right rear wheels. There's also an ESC stability control system that has a sport setting or can be deactivated completely for circuit use. Before driving like this, you'll have chosen your transmission mode, either drive, sport or manual. And most importantly, you'll have visited the drive select system, familiar from humbler Audi models. A setup there for the tweaking of steering weights, gear shift patterns, plus throttle response. And in this case, the operating characteristics of the sport differential too. Then you'll have switched your drive select setting away from either comfort or auto and onto dynamic, uh, which introduces a pleasingly throatier exhaust note and delicious gear shift uh, down change throttle blips. Or the individual setting, which allows you to set up this RS4 exactly as a real pro would set up his race car. The drive select system becomes even more of a one-stop shop for red mist mode if, as I would suggest, you specify the sport package, which Audi expects up to 80% of RS4 owners to take. Here the various settings also tweak the ride, thanks to a dynamic ride control system that reduces body roll through the corners, and can have a greater effect on the steering thanks to an active variable ratio dynamic steering system that still doesn't offer as much feel as I would like, but is a lot better than the standard system. What it all means is that you can get on your favorite country road, punch dynamic in the drive select setup, and then instantly get the ride, the steering, the gear shift pattern, and the throttle control exactly as you want it. Brilliant. The Sport package also includes larger 20-inch alloy wheels, gorgeous looking but frighteningly easy to curb, and something I just have to have if I own this car, a sports exhaust system there to emphasize the V8's distinctive engine note. That only leaves the brakes, with the standard setup very good, but with the option of a pricey ceramic braking system. Uh, mind you, to get the benefit of that on a public road, you'd have to be driving so fast that you might as well just stop by the local police station and give yourself up. Ultimately, what it boils down to is that if you specify your car correctly, then choose the right settings once you have, this RS4 will ride well, steer cleanly, grip like you wouldn't believe, and just demolish any give or take road in any weather. No wonder it's in a class of one. The exterior design of the RS4 has always been about blending just the right amount of discretion and purpose. It's the sort of car that gets a nod of appreciation from those who know what it is, but is discreet enough to pass unnoticed most of the time. Under the skin is Audi's MLP platform that used for the brand's RS5 Coupe, which shares this model's V8 engine, but lacks its near perfect weight distribution. As for the stuff you can see, well, this car is uh, uh, 20 millimeters longer than a standard A4 Avant and 24 millimeters wider and sits 20 millimeters lower to the ground. Chiseled side sill extensions and gently flared wheel arches hint at the performance potential. Plus there are unique bumpers, a matte aluminium style front grille and silver mirror housings as RS sub-brand giveaways to those in the know. Another of those is this smart roof spoiler. Twin oval tailpipe caps and a small diffuser are visible from the rear of the car, which is the view that most other drivers will get of this RS4. While there's a decent colour choice for the paintwork, the interior is almost totally black, unless, as I would advise, you specify the optional moon silver headlining. Otherwise, there's little to break up the cabin darkness, apart from chrome clasps on the switch gear and carbon fibre inlays. Sporting cues include this flat-bottomed, leather-stitched, three-spoke, multifunction sport steering wheel with aluminium effect gear shift paddles just behind it, and on the standard model, a pair of brilliant Super Sports power adjustable seats trimmed in leather and Alcantara and replaced here by a pair of even better RS4 branded bucket chairs. Now the aluminium trim is further echoed on the pedals, 
on the door sill surrounds and on the air vents, while the instrument bezel is trimmed in contrasting shiny piano black. It all looks agreeably expensive. Nobody does this kind of stuff quite like Audi. In the rear, while there's comfortable space for two, a third adult would sit less happily on longer trips. There's certainly enough room for five people's luggage though. You've got a 490 litre boot area that you can make the best use of if you specify this optional telescopic railed load organiser. There's a shallow underfloor boot compartment and a ski hatch for longer items. Plus, of course, you can push forward the 60-40 split rear seat back to free up as much as 1,430 litres. Now, expect to pay from around £55,000 for your RS4. That's in standard trim. Few, if any, will leave the dealership in that way, but we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's cover off the basics. These days, you only get the single Avant body style, so no saloon or convertible options as there were in the previous generation. Audi feels that uh, essentially the same mechanical package in their RS5 coupe and convertible models uh, effectively covers off that requirement. As for rivals, well, as I said at the beginning, uh, there isn't really anything quite like this car on the market, certainly nothing with four-wheel drive. Mercedes' uh, similarly powerful C63 AMG estate probably gets closest, a car that retails for around £3,000 more but only offers two-wheel drive. Uh, BMW's M3 would be another obvious potential alternative if you don't absolutely have to have an estate. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that an RS4 is indeed your ultimate tarmac tearing tool, then you'll be expecting a very well specified car for this kind of money. And by and large, you won't be disappointed. The standard specification includes provision of 19 inch alloy wheels, uh, black leather trim, uh, standard uh, front super sport seats, a DVD based satellite navigation system, Bluetooth phone preparation, an iPod connection, cruise control and a driver information system that includes a specific RS4 menu that gives you a lap timer and an oil temperature gauge. But I'm guessing that like most potential RS4 owners you'll want to go a lot further than that. This test car, for example, is around £70,000 and features what for me is a must-have, the Extra Cost Sport Package, which for around, uh, well, just over £2,000 gives you these gorgeous rotor design 20-inch alloy wheels, lowered sports suspension and dynamic ride control, dynamic steering and a sports exhaust. It also has um, a, uh, the, the restrictor on the top speed removed so that maximum velocity is boosted from 155 to 174 miles an hour. Though that particular feature will cost you around £1,300, which seems rather a lot to simply rewrite a line of software in the engine management unit. This car also has a pricey set of ceramic brakes plus a range of extra cost niceties designed to make its owner feel good about ownership. Uh, carbon fibre engine dressing, uh, sepang blue paint, uh, a set of RS style bucket seats, uh, a garage door opener and uh, a Bang & Olufsen sound system. Were I into high tech, then I might be tempted to spend even more on the mobile phone preparation high with Audi Connect package. Now this gives you uh, Google Mapping, uh, Google Street View and uh, the Audi online traffic information service. Plus it allows occupants to connect their own uh, portable devices to the internet through the car. You can also specify a more advanced HDD satellite navigation system that includes its own jukebox so you can create your own in-car music library. Safety wise, there are the usual twin front side and curtain airbags, plus a very good latest generation ESC stability control system with an interim sport setting that allows you a little extra opposite lock leeway while still providing a safety net in extremis. There's also tyre pressure monitoring and an attention assist system that monitors your driving reactions in the first part of any journey. Then we'll uh, advise you if it thinks that uh, your driving reactions are showing signs of drowsiness and it'll prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. 
Safety options include an adaptive cruise control system that automatically keeps you a safe distance from the car in front on the highway. And that's somewhere where you might also appreciate a lane departure warning system to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes. Cost of ownership, is that really going to be a priority for the typical Audi RS4 buyer? Probably not. But given that ultimately depreciation will always be the highest overall ownership cost in a car this pricey, it's illuminating to go and look at what previous generation RS4 models are changing hands for. I'll save you the bother. They hold their value really well. Uh, certainly much better than you'd expect for a, uh, a big capacity uh, petrol engine estate car. That's because this is the definitive item, especially in third generation guys, the last of a very special line of Audi models uh, fitted with the classic high capacity V8 engine. The one caveat is that you'll need to be really careful how you specify your car. Not having the sport package with its larger wheels, sports exhaust and dynamic steering and suspension systems would, I'd suggest, put your car at a disadvantage on the resale market. On the other hand, go for non-essential pricey options like the ceramic brakes or the HDD navigation package with internet and Google Earth satellite navigation mapping can easily add a huge amount to the asking price that you won't see back at resale time. Get it right and your car should still be worth nearly £30,000 uh, in three years time which is uh, a very impressive return for a model of this sort and certainly better than a rival BMW M3. As for day-to-day -day running costs, well, the wholesale redesign of this car's 4.2-litre V8 engine, along with the introduction of a more efficiently operating 7-speed uh, S-Tronic twin-clutch automatic transmission, has brought efficiency savings of up to 30%. And that means that combined cycle fuel economy has improved from 20.9 to 26.4 miles to the gallon, while uh, CO2 returns have improved from 324 grams per kilometre, rather embarrassing, to a much better, though still uh, hardly saintly, 249 grams per kilometre. Uh, those returns, uh, fuel and CO2, are about 15% better than you get in a rival Mercedes C63 AMG. Uh, less impressive is the fitment of a 61 litre fuel tank, which is far too small for a car of this kind and means that unless you drive this car in a manner that would make its purchase rather pointless, you'll be lucky to see much more than around 200 miles out of a tank full. Insurance is Group 41. Never mind the R8 supercar or the TT Coupe, if you want to understand how brilliant Audi can be in building a sporting car, then the RS4 is always the best barometer, especially in third generation guys. With 450 PS from a hand-built 4.2 litre V8 revving to 8,250 RPM, it's obviously fast. But with an optimised weight distribution, clever electronics and a more rear-driven agenda, this generation version puts something on the menu that's sometimes been absent from Audi RS models in the past. Fun. Is it perfect? No, of course it isn't. The steering still lacks a little feedback, whatever you do to it. Uh, the fuel tank is too small to match the engine's thirst, and I can't afford one. Other than that, it's virtually flawless, which is impressive because it doesn't really have to be. After all, what other high-performance four-wheel drive estate car is there to match this one? Uh, an AMG Mercedes or an Empower BMW wouldn't give you the all-round grip. A high-performance SUV couldn't offer the same pin-sharp handling. Perhaps this Mark III RS4 needed to be this good to continue deterring rivals from making a challenge. Who knows? What's beyond debate is that if you love fast cars and want something with more than a little practicality and year-round capability, then this Audi stands head and shoulders above anything else remotely comparable. Drive it and you'll experience a slightly guilty thrill as if something this much fun couldn't really be legal. One day cars like this might well be legislated out of existence. In the meantime, enjoy this one while you can.